All right, I'd like to uh, bring up now Manuel Sedoya. I just found out Manuel actually is an MIT alum, uh, and he is an international advisor on innovation policy and, uh, and science parks. So welcome, Manuel. Good afternoon, professors and everyone. Thanks for having me. Following the deeply insightful presentation from Lord Foster, it is important to underline that science, technology, innovation, and education will be the key pillars from a forward-looking Kharkiv. This aspiration has been emphasized by the major in countless occasions and it has been also supported by many citizens and professionals across the city. Kharkiv already features quite a good number of actors to build this future. 13 national universities, diverse research institutes and state-owned industrial corporations a very dynamic IT sector, and some business incubators and private innovation projects. But unfortunately, this is not enough, because still Kharkiv has a weak innovation ecosystem, according to the conclusions of very relevant international institutions. No technological modernization in industry, a state owned enterprises with bureaucracy and corruption, very limited cooperation between academia and industry, a quite low R&D expenditure in relation to the GDP, an underdeveloped SME sector with no technological assistance, and finally, a poor performance of so-called science and technology parks. On top of this, and due to the war, you know, we have seen the videos, some very prestigious institutions have been destroyed by the war. Like you can see in the picture, the very famous, very prestigious Karasin University. However, this combination of positive and negative circumstances provides a unique opportunity for leapfrogging. To generate innovation, in addition to universities, research institutes and companies, other mechanisms and linkages are needed to stimulate the interactions between them. If not, knowledge will remain at universities, resources will remain in companies, and innovation will not be generated. A possible solution for this would be, as indicated by the major of Kharkiv, to create a science park, which can become a very positive instrument, as it has been repeatedly demonstrated since 1951, after Frederick Thurman set up the Stanford Research Park, as you know perfectly, the epicenter of Silicon Valley. But it is also true that traditional science parks have some associated drawbacks, like, for example, their isolation from urban centers or their scattered single building design that reduces synergies and interactions. In this situation, considering all these factors, a new urban typology addressing these deficiencies is proposed. The creation of a science neighborhood as an urban space integrated in the city that combines the benefits of a dense neighborhood, like 
makes use of public transportation and urban synergies with those of a science and technology park, innovative companies, universities, high quality buildings and infrastructures, and good working environments, addressing all the already mentioned drawbacks. The science neighborhood would incorporate housing, services, public spaces, and a key element, the innovation engine, specifically designed to generate innovation at its maximum degree and to disseminate this innovation and prosperity to, re to the rest of Kharkiv. Can you imagine an innovation engine integrated in the urban center of Kharkiv with innovative buildings and architectural design, developing science and technology not only for high-tech companies, but to promote the technology art interactions, cultural applications, creative industries, and applying state-of-the-art, but also proven technologies with innovative business models for improving agricultural productivity, sustainability, housing, energy, living conditions. This is what the innovation engine would bring for Kharkiv. In the context of the science neighborhood, with houses, restaurants, art galleries, parks, and so on, the innovation engine should be integrated by two different types of ingredients, what we could call the hardware and the software. And like in computers, both are absolutely essential. The hardware of the innovation engine should include plots of land, multi-tenant buildings with innovative design and high flexibility and interior modularity, shared facilities like auditorium, multipurpose spaces, restaurants and cafes, single tenant buildings for universities, research institutes or innovative companies, infrastructures, like sustainable energy, transport services, and of course, state-of-the-art telecommunications, areas for growth and expansion to accommodate to the needs of the growing companies, and access to high-quality public spaces like parks, sport facilities, or plus. But it is not enough with occupying buildings with companies, universities, and research institutes. To generate innovation at its maximum degree in the framework of the Kharkiv and Ukraine reality, it is necessary to eliminate barriers, to cross boundaries, to set up new actors and mechanisms, to create a neutral and visible ground for all, an, an, an atmosphere and innovative dynamics that today, nowadays, there are not in the, in the city. To achieve this, the software of the innovation engines should include innovation generation mechanisms, like, for example, promotion of entrepreneurship, setting up new applied research centers of university technology transfer units, R&D projects developing, supported by new public competitive funding, generating artistic and cultural technological innovation, and innovative social projects to improve people's lives in different areas. On the other hand, would be the provision of different types of services, like networking, education, information, events, internationalization, or intellectual property, for example. A very important issue would be the management of the innovation engine. I would recommend by a small team of highly 
and highly skilled and dynamic professionals. And last but not least, in relation to finance, it would be very important to plan the innovation engine as a long-term self-sustained business. So once these hardware and software activities are properly managed, the science neighborhood would be able to transform Kharkiv thanks to the creation of a comfortable, smart, green and vibrant neighborhood, the modernization of existing industrial fabric, a new and innovative high-tech industry, entrepreneurship promotion and competitive SMEs, employment creation, including high-skilled jobs, a new collaboration era between academia, industry and government, the talent and investment attraction, which was so clearly explained and underlined in Ed Glaser and Ian Golding's paper, more fiscal revenue and available resources, and finally, making Kharkiv as a reference for Ukraine and the world. To finish up, in 1942, the Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter, who is regarded as the father of the innovation theory, introduced his famous creative distraction concept, the driving force of innovation and economic growth. Eighty years later, and it is very sad to say that as the result of a very destructive war, Kharkiv has the opportunity to demonstrate Schumpeter's theory once again, setting up a science neighborhood as a core element to recreate the city and its social economic development towards the future. And now, Diego, another member of the foundation team, will explain to you how this will be made a reality. Thank you very much.